Is it a great day to be a Christian? Open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Appreciate Brother Joe for leading that song. Standing on the promises. But every time I hear it, I can't help but remember a preacher that said the problem with the church is we spend too much time sitting on the premises instead of standing on the promises. So we need to take that challenge and make sure that we stand up to what the Lord tells us. Last week we talked about how God delivered the children of Israel from Egyptian bondage. We saw them at the foot of Mount Sinai and how it was smoking and quaking and how the presence of God was on the mountain. And He gave them the Ten Commandments. We talked about the first two commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make any graven images. Tonight we're going to talk about the commandment that's found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. It says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. There are two parts to that command. First of all, there's the content, and then there are the consequences. And we'll talk about both of those tonight. So first of all, the content, it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. This is a prohibitive commandment. Just like the first two, it tells you something that you should not do. And we know that when we do something that God says don't do, that that's a sin. So let's look at tonight exactly what is prohibited, what is forbidden by not using God's name in vain. Uh, if you look up the word vain in the dictionary, it says empty, nothing, worthless, of no good purpose. So we're forbidden by this commandment from using God's name for no good purpose. We're using it for the wrong purposes, for using it for worthless purposes, now that doesn't mean that we shouldn't use God's name altogether. Uh, the name Yahweh or Jehovah, or as it's translated most often in the English translations, Lord, is used over 7,000 times in the Old Testament. When this commandment was given, God's name is used over and over and over again. The commandment doesn't forbid us from using God's name. It forbids us from misusing it. Remember the great command, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Taking God's name in vain is not loving Him, it's disrespecting Him. So we need to consider how we should hold the name of God. First of all, let's consider the name of God. Go to Exodus chapter 3. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 3, uh, God's about to send Moses to free the Israelites. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13, we read this. Moses says, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Look at verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God says, my name is I am. God didn't say, I was or I'm going to be. God said, I am. God's eternal. And He wanted His people to know that He was eternal. But the name of God goes beyond the letters of the Hebrew alphabet that are used to write it in the Old Testament. It's the concept of God that we're supposed to keep holy. We're supposed to be remembered of. Uh, any name, any reference to God should be holy. It should be special should not be taken in vain. Now the Old Testament identifies several ways that uh, God's name could be used in vain. The most obvious would be blasphemy. Blasphemy is a curse uh, on God or a curse using the name of God. Turn to Leviticus chapter 24. Leviticus chapter 24 verse 16 forbids blasphemy. It says, And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well the stranger as he that is born in the land. When he blasphemeth, the name of the Lord shall be put to death. That doesn't leave any questions. Blasphemy is using the Lord's name in vain. Second way that they could use the Lord's name in vain would be to uh, forbid or to take a false oath. God forbade people to use false oaths using His name. Go to Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus 19, verse 12 says this, Ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Go to the book of Numbers. 
This command's repeated in Numbers chapter 30, verse 2. It says, If a man vow a vow to the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. A lot of times back then, people would swear by their gods. And God said, if you swear by my name, you better keep what you say. You better do what you say you're going to do. Because if you swear falsely by me, you're going to pay for it. Third command also prohibits people from making false claims and saying they're speaking on God's behalf. Turn to the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23. Begin reading in verse 25. Jeremiah writes this, that I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy a lie in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart. I've never really thought about it until I started preparing this lesson. But that tells us that false teachers, they say they're teaching God's word, they're using his name, and they're teaching something that's not found in the Bible, are guilty of using the Lord's name in vain. So we can't take false oaths, we can't blaspheme, we can't say things that God didn't say and attribute them to God. That's using God's name in vain. It's also using God's name in vain to use it in a meaningless or empty way. Now the Pharisees perverted this commandment like they do everything else. God said, don't use my name in vain. And they took it an extra few steps. They said, well, we won't use God's name at all. Uh, they wouldn't write out God's name. They'd leave letters out. Uh, Yahweh, they would, instead of saying Yahweh, they'd say Y-W-H-W. Uh, they just, or W-H, they'd just abbreviate. They wouldn't want to write the name of God because it was too holy. If they wrote it, uh, even that, they'd use a new quill. Every time the scribes would copy the word, they wouldn't use the same quill to write the other things as they did when they wrote the name of God. That's not what God was saying. God says that we use His name we're just not supposed to use it in vain. But the Pharisees and the scribes and all those people were really upset when Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Not only did he use I am, he used the name of God. He claimed to be God. And they said he was guilty of blasphemy. He deserved to die because of that. And if it had been anybody else, they'd have been right. Because anybody else that claims to be God is blaspheming. But Jesus was God. Jesus was the Son of God. And it was okay for Him to do that. Now that's what the Old Testament says about using God's name in vain. We're no longer under the law of Moses, so let's consider some New Testament principles that are related to this. First of all, Jesus taught not only shouldn't we swear falsely by using God's name, we shouldn't swear at all. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And we'll begin reading in verse 33. Jesus said, Again, ye've heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Jesus said, when you say you're going to do something, do it. When you say you're not going to do something, don't do it. He said, don't make promises, don't swear, just do what you say you're going to do. James echoes that in James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 12, James writes this, But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven nor by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. We need to respect God at all times. We need to honor God at all times. The New Testament teaches not only should we avoid using God's name in our oaths, we should avoid taking oaths at all. But we should make sure that we're careful about everything that we say. Go to Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. This is emphasized there. The Apostle Paul writes in Colossians 4, 6, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Paul says you're Christians. You should sound like Christians. Don't say things that you shouldn't say, especially you shouldn't use the Lord's name in vain. But don't let anything 
like that come out of your mouth. He writes that again in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4, verse 29. Paul says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Using God's name as part of a curse is obviously using it in vain. That's blasphemy. Uh, and not long ago, even our secular television shows honored that. They wouldn't use the Lord's name in vain. They'd use all other kind of four-letter words, but they wouldn't associate the name of God with it. Our morals are declining, and that's not always true anymore. The expression, oh my God, is used flippantly so often in conversation today. Even little kids, when they're surprised about something, will come out with, oh my God. They're not praising God. They're not thanking God. Thanking God. They're not praying to God. They're just using His name as a byword, almost as a curse. The Lord says that's using the Lord's name in vain. And maybe some people that are not kids do that also. Oh my Lord, or Lord have mercy, or oh Jesus, or things like that. When we're calling out the name of the Lord, and we're not doing it reverently, we're not doing it when we're talking to Him, we're using His name in vain. Now, some people go as far as to say euphemisms like gosh and golly and gee and gee whiz are all plays on the Lord's name. You don't really want to use the Lord's name, but you want to get close to it. The question is, if we're going to keep our speech, like Paul says to keep our speech, why do we want to do things that are even close to using the Lord's name in vain? Today, the most frequent uh, example of that is the letters OMG. If you read any texts or Facebook posts or anything like that, over and over people say, OMG, OMG. Well, that stands for, oh my God. But are they really using God's name reverently? Are they praising God when they're saying that? Or are they using it just in vain, just to be saying something? We need to be careful how we use the Lord's name. Now, when we looked at the content, let's consider the consequences of that command. The rest of verse 7 in Exodus 20 says, The Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That says anybody that uses the Lord's name in vain is guilty and they're going to be punished. And Leviticus sets out what the punishment would be. Look at Leviticus chapter 24. Leviticus 24 beginning in verse 11 uh, sets out an example of what happened to somebody that uses God's name in a curse. It says, And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. And they brought him to Moses. And his mother's name was Shelomith, the daughter of Debri, the tribe of Dan. They put him in ward, and the mind of the Lord might be showed them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that cursed without the camp. Let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. Thou shalt speak to the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well as the stranger, as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. Failing to follow through with an oath is also discussed in the Old Testament. When somebody used the Lord's name in an oath and didn't keep the oath, there was a punishment prescribed for that. Look at Leviticus chapter 5. Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 4. It says, or if a soul swear, pronounce it with his lips to do evil or to do good, whatsoever it be that man shall pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. And it shall be when he shall be guilty in one of these things that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. And he shall bring his trespass offering to the Lord for his sin which he has sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats, for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. He said, if you swear by the name of God, you don't do what you say you're going to do. You've sinned. And you need to bring forth the sin offering to take care of it. In the New Testament, Jesus pronounced consequences on people that use vain or empty words. Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. Jesus says, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, by thy words thou shalt be condemned. The New Testament goes beyond the Old Testament. 
Jesus said several times, the, new, the old law said this, but I say, and he gives a higher standard. That's what's happening here. The Old Testament said, don't use the Lord's name in vain. Jesus said, all your words need to be seasoned with salt. All your words need to be issued thinking of the consequences. Think about who's going to be listening. Now, that's a sin, but today we have an opportunity for forgiveness. That's why you need to be a Christian. It's the only life worth living, the only death one would dare to die. A sin can be forgiven through the blood of Christ. To come in contact with that blood in baptism, Acts 2.38, Acts 22.16. For already Christians, we can have our sin forgiven if we confess and ask God to forgive us. So let's talk about it. Let's remember the third commandment. Thou shalt not use God's name in vain. The contents of that command, not to blaspheme God, not to swear falsely using God's name, not to refer to God disrespectfully, the consequences of that sin are Will be, will be held guilty. Everywhere in Scripture, the name of the Lord is to be exalted. That's what we should be doing. We shouldn't be afraid. Am I going to use God's name wrong? We should be thinking about how can we use God's name right. Go to the book of Psalms. Book of Psalms, chapter 8, verse 1. Psalm 8, 1 says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. That's what we should be thinking about. How good, how great, how wonderful God's name is. Go to the 29th Psalm. Psalm 29, 2 says, Give to the Lord the glory due unto His name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We're supposed to be glorifying God. First petition of the model prayer, Jesus told His disciples, pray like this, Matthew 6, 9, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, be thy name. We're supposed to take God's name holy. We're supposed to keep it special. We're supposed to recognize its significance. We're supposed to hallow it. And that goes for the name of Jesus as well. Go to Acts chapter 4. Peter's preaching uh, in Jerusalem. He's talking to the rulers and the elders and the scribes. And he says this in Acts 4 chapter, uh, 4 chapter verse 10. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you hold. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. God's name is to be reverenced. Jesus' name is to be reverenced. In fact, the culminating event of all creation is prophesied in Philippians chapter 2. Let's end there. Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 9. Paul writes this, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that the that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You need to call on the name of the Lord tonight. You need to be forgiven of your sins. If you need to confess sins, if you just need us to pray with you, pray for you. Won't you come forward right now? We stand together as we sing.